Hey guys, welcome to Wagered on Tilt. Um, today we are going to be talking about the Poisson distribution and how you can use that in sports betting and sports modeling. In a Poisson distribution, what you're trying to do is see what is the probability of an event occurring within a certain given time, right? So that given time is typically in sports, a single game or event. So things again would be like a hockey goal, right? It's a singular event, there's one goal. Um, you can loosely use this for things like how many home runs are there going to be, uh, how many runs are there going to be, um, because there's really a few variables in that one, because if you're doing runs in baseball, you could have bases loaded and then dude cranks one out of the park and now you've got four runs uh, that you couldn't have count accounted for with this method. Um, what's great though is again, this method accounts for what is the probability of a certain event occurring in a game, and you can then take that and then compare it against another event, another probability, and then get a final probability. So this works great for totals, right? So what is the probability of a team getting one goal versus the other team getting one goal? What about two goals against one goal, three goals against one goal? And it works really well for totals because then you get to see your total averages and probabilities uh, summed together and what's, what is the percentage of the game going over or under that game total set by the sports book. So let's go ahead and hop on into the spreadsheets and uh, walk you through how it works and how I set mine up. This is the current template uh, that I'm using and just so everybody is aware the formula is actually really brilliant and it works really well in Google Sheets or Excel. You're going to want to collect all of the data you need and then clean it up. 99% of data modeling in sports modeling is around data collection and making sure you get the right data. If you have garbage in, your results are going to be garbage out. That's just the basics of data and information. Um, you can do this via a web scraper or macros. Um, I've written a couple of macros that will hit different websites and pull in the information. You can also use the old method of copy and paste, which also can work sometimes depending upon what you're trying to collect. And you're going to want to collect about two to three years worth of information. Um, and you'll need to know who is the home team, who is the away team, and how much did the home and away team score in those games. I've already corralled all that information for this video and have it stored on a differing table. Um, that information is here, game data. Um, this is not going to be all of the history uh, because I have that stored in a totally different workbook. Um, this is just a demo of it. And this is kind of what the information you're looking for. Again, we want the dates, the away team, their goals, the home team, their goals, and then sometimes I like to include an ending of if it was an overtime or not. That can be useful for other information later. Um, so the more information you have, the better your, your output's going to be for different models. Um, so now that we've got all this data harvested and it's already pulled out, uh, we can do a quick look at the overall setup of the sheet. You don't need uh, to set it up the same way as I do. However, I do find this method is very simple for me to read. Um, and I can see where all the information is coming from. We have an away team and a home team. And then I have uh, away earned and away allowed. And this is for hockey going to be in reference to goals. Then I have an offense or yeah, the offensive strength and a defensive strength of the away team, which is a ranking um, that I can do to kind of formulate how good are they compared to the league. And then you'll have the same information for the home team, home earned, home allowed, home office of strength, home defensive strength. Um, we'll also need to know our league averages for the home allowed, earned, away earned, away allowed. Uh, and that will be able to finally output our expected hits. Um, I just use the phrase hits because you can use this for many different types of indicators. And again, in this demo, we're going to be going through it for goals scored in a game. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and set up a table with a vertical and a horizontal bar. In these bars, you're going to want to go ahead and list 0 to 14. And these are going to represent the goals scored by an away team and goals scored by a home team. Um, I put 0, 0 in there because there is a possible chance that you could have a 0, 0 game. Um, and then 14, just in case some team is getting absolutely destroyed. It also is nice because then you can use this same model and same sheet and just copy and paste it into another workbook to handle a different sport or a different metric and you already have some of the information set up. 
Um, so, and again, this is for hockey goals within a game. Um, so now that we have the sheet set up with the fields that we're going to want to pull data into, I also like to list out the sports book information. Um, what is the over under total? What is the juice for the over? What is the juice for the under? Um, and then have the macro spit out the values here so that I can actually get a better understanding. And then from there, I can evaluate uh, my expected value on any of these wagers. To figure that out, we need to actually now use the Poisson distribution table that we have below. So when you first build this, you're not going to have all this lovely information in there. This is where you need to type in the very simple Poisson dist formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and enter in Poisson.dist for the first one. Then we need to grab the X, which is going to be F15, right? So we're trying to see zero goals. And then we're going to grab D2, which is the average, right? So we're going to look at the D2, so for the away. And then we're going to look at and say false. So we don't want cumulative. Um, so what that's going to give you is the probability of the away team scoring zero goals when their average is this value here. So that's going to get you that value. And you would do the same thing for the home team. Now, what we're doing is we're multiplying these two different probabilities of the away team and the home team to score zero goals, because again, it's looking at this number. So to get a zero, zero game, we would have a 0.34% probability, less than 1%, less than a half of a percent. So what's important about this is that when we're having multiple probabilities, you multiply probabilities when you're trying to figure out what the actual probability of something is. If you have two variables that are probables, then you multiply them out. Um, so again, th this is really simple to use once you have the sheet set up. So then what we're going to do is we would just copy and paste this formula across the table from 14 all the way to 14 and it's going to spit out some numbers for us. Um, you will want to lock some of your cells. Here I've locked you know the column and then the actual mean value that it's coming from. And then for the uh, other one I locked in the row and then I've locked in the other expected where it's coming from. So once you get a table that's populated with percentages like this you can go ahead and go into conditional formatting color scales, and then choose you know, your style of heat map. I like using heat maps because it makes it quick and easy to see. Um, so visually, I can identify if you know something is way off with a sports book, um, what they're offering, and I can see that very quickly. Um, so in this scenario, we've got five and a half goals. So we need to either have the, the game end in five goals or less, or six goals or more. And we're trying to see what the probability is. Um, so the way to do this is that if we want to see what the probability of the under would be, we're going to need to see all scenarios where the game total is less than five, the, or equal to five. The easiest way to do this is to start out on the left side and say, okay, the first value would be five to zero. Then you're going to just kind of step stair your way up the sheet and capture the next one. Cause that's going to be the next scenario. 4 to 1, 3 to 2, 2 to 3, 1 to 4, 0 to 5, right? So now that we've locked those in, those and any other of these ones above it will mean the scorer is 5 or less. So we're just going to go ahead and highlight these and look at what Excel says down here. All right, so the summed percentages is 49.75%. That means we have a 49.75% chance that this game is going to go five goals or less. Um, to figure out what the over would be, you would just merely subtract uh, 0.4975. Remember, it's a percentage, so you got to shift the decimal. But subtract that from one, and then that will give you your over. And then that because that needs to account for all of these cells, um, and then that will give you the over. So when you go ahead and do that. Right, we've got, if we look over here, the under um, and then the over, right? So you can also invert it, right? You can take the over and then subtract that from one to get the under. So again, the under is 0.4975. Um, 
that's not great, but it's not terrible either. Um, when you're looking at this stuff, uh, you want to remind yourself that just because you have a higher probability of something happening does not mean to take it. Many times you want to look at the under or other less probable events. Uh, the reason why you want to do this is value being offered on a less likely scenario. Sometimes sports books will give you far more value and better odds on a less probable situation. But if it's only less probable by three or four percent, there's a real great opportunity to, to make some earnings on that one. Again, though, you don't want to just go on numbers alone or blind value. You got to really think about it and look at other things going on. Um, as wagering people, we are always looking for value, but we have to assume all the additional news. All right, so that is it for today on the Poisson distribution betting model. Um, if you're interested in wagering models, sports betting, and logic and thought process behind the madness of sports betting, feel free to subscribe. Um, that way you can be notified whenever the next piece of content is up. If you have anything you'd like to see me make content about as far as sports betting or wagering or different types of betting pools you can do with your friends, please let me know in the comments and I can try and see what I can do. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about the video, good or bad, please let me know. Um, I love to teach. I'm very obsessed with teaching and sports betting and analytics. Uh, so if any of this was confusing or you didn't like the video for a specific reason, please let me know. That way I can just improve the content for everybody. Um, as a reminder, though, sports wagering is meant to be entertainment. A, uh, a very small fraction of people can actually make a living from this. So if you're thinking that, you know, you're going to become a professional sports better, more power to you, but please do it with caution. Um, and that if this is impacting your life in any seriously negative way, um, or you're sweating a wager at night and you're worried that if, you know, you're not going to make it, if that, that bet doesn't hit, um, take a break, you know, step away from sports betting, sports modeling and wagering. Um, and if you're having some major issues, uh, go ahead and seek help, right? Because this is this can become an addiction because people think that it's a form of a business when it's much more of a business for the books and it's more entertainment for us as the wagerers. Um, again, I'm not a sharp by any means. I'm not a professional sports better, but I have been betting for about 15, 20 years. Um, so lastly, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in uh, for this discussion around the Poisson uh, wagering model and betting styles. Thanks, everybody.